Good morning, guys. Happy Wednesday. Um, today's chapter is chapter 30, Play Like Johnny. Ava sat with Sophia on the bus ride back to school. So things are a lot better because I saw Jessica at lunch, and I told her that somebody told me that Jason liked me. I didn't tell her it was the pencil, because how weird is that? But I told her I had no idea they were going out, or I totally wouldn't have gone near him. And she said that was okay because she broke up with Jason anyway, because she found out Brady Therm uh, Tremont wants to go out with her. And he's cuter and an eighth grader. So then, right after you finished that thing with the logs, I went up and said hi to Jason, and he asked if he could call me later, and I said yes. So it looks like we might get together anyway. Well, that's good. Ava looked out the window for a few seconds. Almost all the leaves had blown off the trees. She turned back to Sophia. How come you were mad at me? I'm not mad at you, Sophia's eyes went all big. I was going to sit with you on the bus this morning, but you were already sitting with somebody. You were mad, right? Ava looked at Sophia and raised her eyebrows. I was really mad at your pencil, and it's weird to be mad at a pencil, so I guess I kind of took it out on you. Sophia sighed. You know how I am, whether I'm happy or upset or whatever. Sometimes I get so hyped up I don't even know what I'm thinking anymore, and then I do things like decide to open crazy shopping businesses or ask out other people's boyfriends or run away from my best friend. And usually you're the person I talk to about everything. You are the one who settles me down. Really? Eva had never thought of herself as, as the stable one. Really? But this time you were all wrapped up with, with up in it with the pencils and everything so, Sophia shrugged. I'm really sorry. It's okay, Ava said. Forgiveness is an attribute of the strong, she thought. She was feeling strong today, and she was glad to have Sophia back. She was going to need a friend, but she didn't tell Sophia about the pencil's latest news. Not yet. She wanted to go home and see how bad it was, and then, then she'd figure out what to do next. Ava's dad was supposed to pick her up after the field trip, but his pickup truck wasn't in the school parking lot when the, gus the bus got back, so Ava went inside to wait. She got her books from her locker and headed for the bench by the front door, but Sophia called to her. Hey, where's your saxophone? Jazz tryouts. Jazz tryouts were today. It's in my band locker, but I can't go to tryouts, Ava said. I have to go home. My dad's picking me up. Sophia appeared out the school glass door to the parking lot. I don't see his truck. I'm going down for my tryout now. Call your dad and tell him you're coming too. Ava shook her head. I really can't. But calling was a good idea. Maybe dad forgot with everything going on. He had, ha he had to have talked to mom by now. I'll call you later. Ava headed for the office. Hello, Ava. Mrs. Zuckerman smiled over the counter. Hi, Mrs. Zuckerman. May I please use the phone to call my dad for a ride? No need, she said. He called not five minutes ago and left a message that he's busy this afternoon, but I'll pick you up at four after jazz tryouts. <clears throat> How does he know about jazz tryouts? Ava blurted. Parents have a secret sixth sense. Mrs. Zuckerman wiggled her eyebrows. Also because Miss Romero came by the office to call your house when you didn't show up for the audition right away. She had already spoke to your dad when I told her the field trip bus was running late. She said she'd wait for you in the band room, so everything's good. Uh -oh. No, everything wasn't. But Ava knew that she wasn't going to get to go to tryouts. Thanks, she told Mrs. Zuckerman and headed for the band room. There you are. We were going... We were getting ready to send out a search party, Miss Romero motioned Ava towards the instrument lockers. Get yourself tuned up and you can play next. She turned back to Sophia through a tough section on her drum solo. Ava took out her saxophone and put a reed in her mouth while she put the pieces together. 
Her scraped up hands stung every time she touched something and her arms were sore from hanging on so tight all day. She was tired, so tired and worry, of worrying. She just wanted to get home and hear the news and cry, but dad wasn't coming for another half hour and she knew from the adventure course that doing something was better than doing nothing. So she'd play. Which song do you, did you decide to do? Miss Romero asked Ava as Sophia waved and headed down the hall to her locker. Ava wagged back and shuffled through her sheet music. She'd accidentally brought Grandpa's Johnny Hodges song along with the jazz tryout piece. I practiced two of them. She sat down in front of the music stand. I tried the Titanic one and she stopped herself from saying the one you like better because Miss Romero wasn't supposed to know that. And this one. She held up the monk music. Miss Romero nodded. Give them both a shot if you like. I'll listen and take some notes and we'll talk after, okay? Ava nodded and turned to the first page <clears throat> of the straight No Chaser song and started to play. <clears throat> Ava's version sounded stumbly and garbled. She felt bad for putting Miss Romero through all three pages, but she forced herself to the end. Okay, not bad, Miss Romero lied. It was awful. Well, it's a tough song, she said, and I can tell you made a go of the dynamics, which is great. Why don't you try the Titanic song too, so you get to show a different style, okay? Ava sighed. It was only a quarter to four. She, sh she switched the music and started playing. But all she could think about was Leonardo DiCaprio with icicles hanging off his eyebrows, and somehow that made her think of her mom and chemotherapy, even though chemotherapy had nothing to do with icicles. Ava stopped in the middle of the measure and put her saxophone down. Is it okay if I play something else? Miss Romero frowned. Like what? We did have a set choice for the tryouts, so I'm not sure I can. It doesn't matter if I get to try out or not. It's fine. If I can't do jazz band, I just, I need to play something right now, please. Ava blinked fast to keep her tears inside. It mostly worked. Miss Romero's face softened and she nodded. Sure, go for it. Ava pulled the Johnny Hodges song from the bottom of the pile. She didn't look up at Miss Romero's face to see what she thought of it. It didn't matter. Ava needed to play this one for herself. She needed to play like Johnny. When she'd been alone in her room, it made her feel better. Not all the way better, but a little less lousier. She wasn't about to explode from the inside out. She needed it to make her feel that way now. She played the song from start to finish without looking away from the music. She played for Johnny Hodges and for Grandpa and for Mom, but mostly she played for herself. She let the notes carry her, let her fingers ride the keys, let herself be lifted up by her own breath blowing through the horn. She tried as hard as she could to forget she was Ava, to forget she was tired, scared girl with scraped palms and bandaged knees, with a mom with cancer. She tried to be someone else, someone who played and didn't worry, not about a thing all the way to the last note. Then she put her saxophone down. She was only Ava again, but not tied up quite so tight inside, and that helped. Ava, that was, that was amazing. Miss Romero took a deep breath as if she could draw in whatever was left of those notes hanging in the air. Just beautiful. Thanks. And then someone started clapping to someone's. Ava saw when she turned around. Her parents were standing in the doorway. Um, the next chapter is cha um, Cancer and Cookies. So I'm going to read a little. I'm going to try to read it all. <sighs> How was your doctor's appointment? Ava asked as soon as they got into the car to go home. Mom didn't answer right away. She looked across the front seat at Dad. He nodded at her just a little. It was fine, Mom said. Then she turned in her seat to face Ava. But they did see something that concerned them, so I had to go to a different office to have an ultrasound. 
That's why we're late. I also, also have to go back for a biopsy. Do you know what that is? Kind of. Ava knew exactly what it was. She read all about breast cancer on the website. After something showed up on a mammogram, doctors did a biopsy where they take a sample of tissue to check to see if it's cancer. Ava wished she could just fast forward all this. She already knew. It's to find out if you have cancer. Her mom hesitated, then nodded. The doctor says it may not be. And if it is, they caught it early, very early. And that's good. I don't want you to worry. When's the biopsy? Tomorrow morning, Mom said. They had a cancellation, so it's right away. She hesitated again. I'd like to wait until after that to talk with Marcus and Emma, okay? They didn't even know I had the appointment today, and I don't want to worry them if it's nothing. Ava forced herself to say okay, even though she knew it wasn't nothing. Good. Mom said and nodded quickly, changing gears. She complimented Ava again on her song in the band room, then about the adventure course, and applauded when Ava told her she'd finished. Just like Christopher Robin told Winnie the Pooh, Mom said, you're braver than you believe. For once, her mom got the quote right. And stronger than you seem, Ava joined in. And smarter than you think, she smiled. But her eyes welled up and she had to turn toward the window. It was going to be a long couple of days. Her mom would need to remember those words too. Hmm. I'm gonna stop there for today, but the next line um, says, the pencil wasn't wrong. The pencil was right. So we'll pick up there tomorrow. Bye guys.